The topic under discussion today is trypanosomiasis. This topic will be made very easy. How like just concentrate. First of all, I'll tell you people what is trypanosomiasis. Then I will tell you people about the cause of this trypanosomiasis. And then we'll be talking about the vector. And I will tell you people what vector is, the vector term. After that, I will tell you the vector of this trypanosomiasis. And then we will be talking about some species of this particular causative agent, which is going to cause trypanosomiasis. We'll talk about the species. And then we'll be talking about the life cycle of the trypanosoma, which is actually causing trypanosomiasis. And at the end, we'll be discussing the pharmacology, the drugs used to treat this trypanosomiasis. So these all will be the very points that will be helping us to understand this particular discussion in a very easy way. Let's get started. What is trypanosomiasis? Very simple. Trypanosomiasis in simple words is known as sleeping sickness. Okay, very simple. Now what is the cause of this trypanosomiasis or sleeping sickness? The cause is trypanosoma. Now, because of this trypanosoma, the sleeping sickness is named as trypanosomiasis. Very simple. Now, this trypanosoma is actually a unicellular flagellated protozoa. We have protozoa. In the protozoa, there is one trypanosoma, which is actually a unicellular flagellated protozoa. Now, this is having a nucleus and a flagella in its structural composition. Okay. Now, this is the very structure of this trypanosoma. Now, what is the vector for this trypanosoma? First, let us know what vector term is. Then, we'll come towards the vector for the trypanosoma. Vector is simply just a car, vehicle that is actually needed for this trypanosoma, for this, for this protozoa. Now, this protozoa cannot move on its own from one place to another place. So, it needs some kinds of vehicle or a car. So that car in the biology is named as a vector. Now this vector is actually a car for this trypanosoma. Now this trypanosoma will sit in this car and the car is named is TSE, TSE fly. This vector, this car which is used by this trypanosoma has got interesting pronunciation. Some people pronounce this as like CC. CC fly, CC fly, whereas some pronounce this as Satsi fly. Well, anyway, that fits you, just pronounce that way. Coming to the point, now this is the car for this trypanosoma protozoa. Now, this protozoa will, will sit in this car, which is biologically known as vector. I hope you got the understanding of the vector. Now, we have a trypanosoma of different species, and the species that are responsible to cause diseases in humans are actually of two types, cruzy and bruzy. Cruzy is responsible to cause American sickness, whereas Bruzy is supposed to cause African sickness, that is actually the sleeping sickness. We'll not discuss the Cruzy, we'll discuss the Bruzy. And this Bruzy is further composed of two species, Trypanosoma Bruzy Gambiensi, Trypanosoma Bruzy Rhodesiensi. Now, this Gambiensi is actually responsible to cause sleeping sickness, and these are actually responsible to cause 97%. Means 97% patients that are suffering from the sleeping sickness are often seen with this particular species, Gambiensi. Now, let's get towards the next point, that is the life cycle of this particular trypanosoma protozoa. Now, as this protozoa, this trypanosoma, sits in the vector, in the car, that will carry this protozoa to the humans. Now, this is the car which will help in transporting this particular vector into humans. Now, this taxi fly will bring this particular uh, trypanosoma protozoa in its saliva or in the feces. Now, from by means of this saliva or feces, this particular protozoa will be injected into the humans. And in the humans, they are named as metacyclic trypomastigots, which will be converted into amastigots. Now, these are actually the shape conversion. Because of that shape changing, these are named with different names. So, now these amastigots will be flowing in the blood, lymph, and they can also flow in the spinal fluid. Now, these amastigots will undergo the process of multiplication and again, they will synthesize trypomastigots. Now, these trypomastigots in stumpy form will be floating in the blood, lymph and they can move in the spinal fluid. So, those which move in the spinal fluid, they can cross the blood-brain barrier. As they cross the blood-brain barrier, they will cause the sleeping sickness. 
Okay, now this sleeping sickness, which is named as trypanosomiasis, sleeping sickness trypanosomiasis is just one thing. Okay, trypanosomiasis is a, a difficult name, whereas the sleeping sickness is a simple name, neutral name. Now, this sleeping sickness will be in such a way that a person will not be able to sleep properly, his sleeping conditions will be changed. A person who was supposed to sleep at night now won't be able to sleep at night. That person might shift to day sleeping. So, like this, this the rhythm of sleep will be flipped, changed. Well, this is how it is is causing the sleeping sickness what happens sometime if again the fly comes and bites that particular infected person now this fly will suck these stumpy form type of mastigotes is they are sucked they will be named as procyclic type of mastigote when they are available for the very first time in this new fly now this will be called as procyclic type of mastigote. They will be converted into epimastigote after the binary fission. First of all, these procyclic type of mastigote will undergo the binary fission. They will divide into two. Then those will grow up and will be named as epimastigote. Now these epimastigotes will develop in this stage some flagella. Now those flagella, by means of those flagella, they will start adhering to the salivary gland. Now here when they adhere, when they stick to the salivary gland, at this stage they are named as metacyclic trypomastigotes. Now again, these trypomastigotes are available to be injected into the new one by the same fly. So like this, this fly may reach another human and in fact that human also. This was all about the life cycle of this particular trypanosoma and this trypanosomiasis or sleeping sickness. I hope you got. Now let's come towards the pharmacology, the drugs used to treat trypanosomiasis. We have different drugs. Some of the drugs used against Gambian-Z and uh, Rhodesian C are the pentamidine, eflornithine, suramine, milasoprol. These are the very drugs commonly known and used to treat these diseases. So in order to treat the disease caused by the Gambian Z species, we'll use these two drugs. And in order to treat the disease caused by Rhodesian Z family species, Rhodesian species will use these two drugs. Now, these two are used with respect to the patient. If the patient is in the first stage, we'll be using pentamidine regarding if that disease is caused by the Gambian Z. And if the patient is in the first stage, of the disease caused by Rhodesian C will be indicating suramine to that patient. Okay, in the first stages, we'll be using pentamidine and suramine. And if the patient is in the late stage, then we'll be indicating fluorithine to the patient that is suffering from the disease caused by the Gambian Z. Okay, and we'll indicate melasoprol to the person if that is suffering from Rhodesian C species. So now, what is the real cause of indicating these drugs in a different way? Means some of the drugs are indicated in early stage and whereas some of the drugs are indicated in the late stage. Very simple. 